The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our software automation webinar series. My name is Sasha Pizzoli, and I am a marketing coordinator here at SWK. It is my pleasure to welcome you all today. Um, and today I'll be joined by Lindsay O'Brien, marketing brand manager at Anytime Collect. Uh, she'll be walking you through five easy steps to overcoming collection email hurdles, and most importantly, how to get your customers to take a desired action through an email. Just a few housekeeping items. All lines will be muted during the presentation. Uh, we will record and distribute the webinar to you in a few days for your convenience. Um, and if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box at the bottom of your GoToWebinar sidebar and hit send question to staff at any time through the webinar. Um, we'll be going through questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started with our presentation. Thanks, Sasha. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, just a little bit um, about us before we get started. Um, we are Anytime Collect, and we uh, were founded in 2008. You guys might have seen uh, recently that there's been a lot of AR um, softwares that um, are out there now and on the market. Um, but we've been around since 2008. Um, we have had a lot of opportunities to work with different types of customers who have different types of needs. Um, which has allowed us to really um, create a workflow that can help, um, you know, small companies to big companies, companies that um, are in a slew of industries. Um, so it has also given us the opportunity to really become experts in um, different types of collection tips and tricks and best practices. Uh, so on the agenda today, uh, we have the five easy steps to overcoming collection email hurdles. Um, we're going to talk about how to get the email in your customer's inbox, how to get your customer to open it, how to get your point across, and finally, how to get the customer to take action and pay you. Uh, so step one, we have um, that spam filters have really become one of the biggest problems that collection representatives have to deal with when they're sending collection letters via email. Um, I'm sure all of you in your offices have some type of um, spam filter on top of the one that is inherent in your Gmail or your Outlook. Um, and this can be frustrating sometimes even on the receiving end that you're not getting all the emails that you were expecting to get. Um, and a large majority of collection representatives don't have any way to um, battle these spam or junk filters that their customers have on their emails. Um, but we have some um, tricks on how to do that. So. Um, in a study uh, done by the National Association of Credit Management, they found that 40%, 41% of respondents uh, to the survey uh, had measures in place to make sure that their collection emails weren't caught in spam fol folders. 49% um, of them um, don't have anything, and then 10% didn't even know. So that excuse of, I never received the invoice, which you might have heard a few times, um, might actually be true because the if you're sending them via email, they might have gotten into a spam or junk filter and the customer may have never seen it. Uh, so some ways to avoid this. Um, there are some spam filter trigger words that you'd want to avoid. Um, if you put this in your subject line, it's likely that your customer won't receive the email because it gets caught in spam. Uh, words like collections, credit, overdue, um, typically these spam filters will see these as a potentially threatening email. Um, ask your customers to add your email address to their safe senders list. So as soon as you uh, add that customer to your list of customers that need to be contacted, um, or as uh, as soon as you realize that this customer keeps going past due, make sure that they're adding your email address to their safe senders list so that it's not getting um, ever stuck in the junk or spam no matter what your subject lines are. And then finally, follow up with a phone call. So as soon as you send that invoice um, or as soon as you send them an email, immediately pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, I just, I just sent you an email. Can you confirm with me that you received it? Um, or if, they're, uh, if they've gone past due, call them up. Did you get my email? Um, I sent you the invoice. It's always uh, a great um, 
tactic to call them and, and get them on the phone to make sure that uh, they've been receiving your invoices. It's also a great time to also uh, tell them to add that email address to their safe senders list. So uh, step two, I'm sure that all of you have had times where you open your inbox, if not every day, and you're just completely inundated with emails. Um, some, I know some customers are getting you know, hundreds of emails a day, if not more. Um, so the big thing is you want to make sure that you're standing out and you're getting the attention of your customer and they need to feel like they are compelled to open this email, that it's one of the most important ones in their inbox or otherwise it could end up just getting, you know, piled in with everything else um, and going completely unnoticed. So some ways to uh, combat an issue like this is um, to put yourself in your customer's shoes. Uh, type up that subject line or type up that first sentence that you're going to put in the email to really grab your customer's attention. Would you engage with this email? Is this something that you would open and continue with? Um, really putting yourself in um, a space to try and understand uh, what is really going to grab someone's attention um, is a great way to deal with this. Um, keep your subject line short. If you've ever noticed that in your um, inbox, sometimes subject lines can get cut off, there's a 50 character uh, limit on most inboxes. So you need to make sure that your subject lines are shorter than 50 characters or they might not even see half of what you're trying to tell them and half of what you're trying to say to get their attention. Um, and then if they're using their a mobile phone, um, then that's the, that character limit is gonna be even less. Um, use clear subject lines. Um, so a study conducted by AWeber Communications found that a clear subject line gets 541% more clicks than one that's trying to be clever. Um, so it's not really the time when it comes with in, to invoices, it's not really the time to you know try to get clever and, and tricky with customers. Just put the invoice number, um, indicate exactly what the intent of the email is. And then finally, personalize. So like I just mentioned in the uh, previous best practice, <clears throat> uh, that it's important to you know clearly make your intentions by putting the invoice number, personalizing it by using that invoice number, or personalizing it by putting their company name, your company's name, or even using the word you in the subject line m helps the customer to see that this is an important email and it directly affects them. Um, so some uh, bad subject line examples that you want to avoid are first one, your invoice is overdue, pay today, or your credit score will drop. We had mentioned earlier overdue and credit score are both um, spam filter triggers. So it's clear that that subject line probably won't make it into their inbox. The second one, pay this invoice now, even though there's no uh, trigger filter words in here. Uh, seems pretty aggressive and like we talked about put yourself in your customer's shoes if you got this email would you really be apt to take any uh, action on it or would you sort of feel like you're being targeted by this person and then finally the last one please submit payment for your overdue invoice immediately uh, it's more polite than the second one but again we have that um, spam filter trigger and it's kind of long so it might get cut off some good subject line examples. Um, we've got following up on your invoice number one, two, three, four, five. So we've got some personalization. The second one creates urgency by putting last chance and then also gives two different forms of personalization, personalization um, for uh, this subject line. And then again, the last one, reminder, it's giving more of those um, personal touches um, and it's creating more urgency. So the third step, um, this is for not only your subject lines, but this is for the body of the email. So you might have gotten your customer to open the email, but now you need to make sure that they're actually going to read it. Uh, so the first point is to stick to the point. Um, limit your email to one topic, or in this case, one invoice, so that there's no confusion. Um, and they can email easily be searching this um, inbox or searching the email and find exactly what they need to do. Um, don't bring in other conversations 
Um, if you need to, if they um, reply back with something that's totally off topic, start another email chain with a subject line that reflects that new topic. When you do this, you can ensure that your customer is able to search their inbox and find these past conversations when they need to bring them up with you. Otherwise, they might struggle to find some information that you had given them in a previous email. Um, another way to really organize um, in this way and allowing your customers and yourself to find emails quickly is by using an automated um, accounts receivable software. Um, your emails will automatically get pulled into the software. They will automatically be filtered and put into specific bu buckets and associated with the right account. So then there is no um, struggle looking for what email goes with what customer. Um, even if the even if there's a new AP person that comes in, that email is going to go to go to the right account, and you're going to know exactly who it's for. Um, stay away from caps and be polite. So we saw one of the bad subject line examples. It was in all caps, and I think we've all had a moment where someone has sent us something, and it was in all caps, and we felt like they were yelling at us. Uh, just don't use caps. It usually makes people feel like you're being aggressive um, or threatening. Uh, and you never want to do that because uh, being an AR person means that you're also a part of customer service. Uh, don't say more than you need to. So keep your email concise. As we talked about earlier, uh, you know, start another topic of conversation separately. But also you want to make sure that you're conveying that they're late on payment. They need to pay you. Lay out the instructions on how to send payment because anything beyond that is just a filler in the email. Just put the instructions exactly in the way that you need them to do it. Uh, plan for possible responses. So um, I'm sure you guys have back in maybe middle school or elementary school used if-then statements. Um, come up with some of these when you're sending your emails so that you're addressing your customers' questions before they even have a chance to ask them. Um, you're, that'll help you cut down on the time when, that it takes to get paid because they're not emailing you, emailing you back, calling you back. Um, for example, some of these if-then statements might be, and put them right into the email. If you have already submitted payment, please disregard this email. If you have a question or concern about this invoice, please call me and give your phone number. Or if you're unable to pay at this time, please contact me so we can work out a payment plan. You're already addressing these things and then you, you can avoid some confusion or avoid someone waiting to finally reach out to you because they weren't sure what to do. Um, don't forget about layout and don't be afraid to use bullet points, numbers, paragraphs, um, break it up. Um, studies have found that when a, an email is broken out into separate paragraphs, it's easier for the eyes to read over, skim over, and still get the point of what you're trying to say. Uh, so using these bullet points and paragraphs will allow your customers who are really short on time to understand what you're saying and get the point of the email, know that they need to make payment, but you're, you're not sucking up all of their time with this giant paragraph email. And then finally, review and edit. I'm sure um, you've heard about proofreading. Um, everything should always be proofread. Make sure, is the message clear? Would, they po would the customer possibly misunderstand this? And if I were a customer, again, put yourself in their shoes, would you read the email? And when you look at that email, if it's one giant paragraph, would you bother to read it or would you continue to um, flip through the other emails in your inbox? Step four, um, we're going to get the customer to take action. This is where they might have received the email. They might, it might have gotten through the spam filters. They might have actually read it. But now you actually need them to make payment because that's what this is all about. Um, so one of the first things to really remember is that your collection emails and what you put in them need to vary based on where the customer is in their um, payment reminders. If this is the first email that you're sending to them, this is the they haven't gone late yet or they're only a few days late, you don't want it to be too threatening or aggressive um, or negative towards the customer. But then on the flip side, if they're 90 days late, you don't want it to seem like you don't care and that you don't aren't in any rush to get paid. Um, so your messaging needs to continue to um, be inflective of, of where they are in the process. So one way that you can do that is choosing your words strategically. Um, so uh, 
some examples instead of I have attached your invoice to this message try for your convenience I've attached uh, your invoice to this message um, instead of please call me to resolve this matter please call me so we can quickly resolve the matter and then instead of please send a check to the address below try please send a check to the address below or to save time you can submit payment online so one of the things that um, connects all of these different um, examples of things that you can try in, instead it doesn't seem like they're very different but it's all pointing to the same thing for the customer to feel like you went out of your way to help them for your convenience so we can quickly resolve it um, to save time make your customer feel like you're going the extra mile to help them and save them time um, allowing them to submit payment online having that capability um, allows them to do things on their own time and usually no one wants to pick up the phone and read off a credit card number or send a check in the mail if they can just use their credit card get the points on their credit card a lot of companies want to do that now um, then they can quickly do it probably without even contacting you um, and then some words that uh, tend to really help um, to make your customer feel like you're going the extra mile for them. Um, best, convenient, easy, fast, quickly, save, and time are some of the most persuasive words in the English language. Um, so putting those, adding those in there, um, sprinkling them in, in a sentence can really help to get your customers to take action. Uh, so like we talked about before, uh, give the customer what they need. So putting that direct link to the invoice online in the email. Um, clearly giving them your phone number and direct extension, giving them the correct mailing address and directions on how to send the invoice, what needs to be, or the, uh, to send the check, uh, what needs to be included, who it needs to be made out to. Um, if you're not giving them all of these tools to, um, to make the payment, no one's going to go out of their way to do it. They're just going to blow it off. Well, how am I supposed to do this? Where am I supposed to send payment? I'll put it on the back burner for now. Um, make sure that they have everything that they need to make that payment quickly um, and at their own convenience. One thing that Anytime Collect does um, support is giving that direct link to the invoice online where they can pay online. Um, and the, uh, the link can be included in all of your automated emails to any customer that has an open invoice. So finally, finding the time. All of this sounds really great personalizing the emails and um, sending out these links to um, to pay online and taking the time to follow up on every email that you send and call the customer but who really has the time to do that um, AR people are some of the, the most busy in one of the busiest departments it is typically way understaffed um, so using um, AR automation is one of the ways that you can complete all of these tasks um, because some of them are automated and then that gives you the time when you're not having to send those emails when you're not having to personalize those emails yourself then you can just make sure that you're following up on the phone um, or just following up on the ones that you know need the attention so if you have around like a thousand emails that you're sending a month I mean it takes you around five minutes to send each uh, email that's about 83 hours a month that you're spending just sending emails um, so that's really taking up a huge chunk of your time and using AR automation is going to speed up that process because you're never going to have to send those emails again. They're automatically going to go up for you. Um, like I mentioned that you can include personalization in your AR automation when it is sending out those e collection emails for you. Uh, things like what is the invoice number, um, what the company name is, you can just use snippet codes when you're crafting and creating your own emails and just have the um, the database drop in what that invoice number is or what that company name is or how much they owe or what their uh, past due balance is anything like that um, really any field that exists within your um, business software and or your ERP system can be dropped into an email to personalize it um, with uh, centralization um, Automated AR software uh, puts all the information into one place. So maybe one of your collectors goes on vacation, but that doesn't mean that collection stops on those customers. You can have someone look over their accounts. They can see exactly where they left off, 
who's been contacted, who needs to be contacted, um, all of that information is in one place, which is especially helpful when turnover with employees is one of the most expensive um, areas in a business. Um, it takes a lot of time to onboard a new employee, but when you have all the information of where that previous employee left off, then you can hit the ground running with someone new. Um, you can, some of the, e the automated emails that you can send, on top of personalization, you can also include um, documents, including invoices, um, including uh, past due notices and statements. You can even do cus uh, customer welcome letters or credit applications. Um, so it's not really just defined down to that, uh, just sending out invoices. Uh, and then uh, finally, you can uh, track all outbound and inbound email communication. So with Anytime Click, we actually also have uh, the ability for um, uh, phone IVR. So when you're making your collection phone calls, you can um, have them uh, recorded and transcribed. And then it automatically, uh, that transcription and that recording is saved back against the account and against that particular um, invoice that you are calling on. So you have complete um, visibility into all of the inbound and outbound communications um, on top of the email. And then that is all that we had uh, today. So uh, thank you guys for, I hope you all learned uh, something new about email collections and something that you can put to use. Thank you, Lindsay. And there's a lot of really good information packed into that presentation. Again, we will be sending out the recording um, to all of the attendees um, if you guys want to reference the presentation again. Um, and before we begin the question and answer session, if you have any additional questions after the Q&A, please email your customer account manager or camteam at swk.com if you don't know who your customer account manager is, we can help you out with that. Um, so now let's see um, if any questions came through. Okay, so it looks like we have one question. Um, and the question is, um, what does Anytime Collect connect to or connect with? Um, so we actually have the ability to connect to um, any business system or ERP system. Um, we have customers that are um, sending invoices back and forth from their ERP system to third-party collection systems or uh, faxing systems. Um, really anything that you can pull data out of, we can connect with. Okay, great. Let me go ahead and see if any more questions came through or if anybody raised their hand. Um, I'll give it about another few seconds. Um, and it looks like that concludes our webinar today. Thanks again, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Lindsay, um, and have a Thank great day. Thank you. Oh, we got... Oh, it was just a thank you. False alarm. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.